It's Patrick Hatzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com, where we instantly improve the lives for families of critically ill patients in intensive care so that you can make informed decisions, have peace of mind, real power, real control, and so that you can influence decision-making fast, even if you're not a doctor or a nurse in intensive care. This is another episode of Your Questions Answered, and in last week's episode, I answered another question from one of my clients, and the question in the last episode was, proven strategies, how to keep your loved one ventilated with tracheostomy in an ICU rather than going to LTAC or subacute care. You can check out last week's episode by clicking on the link below this video. In this week's episode of Your Questions Answered, I want to continue answering the next questions regarding James and Christine's dad in intensive care who's had a hemorrhagic stroke. James and Christine's dad had a brain decompression where they evacuated a large bleed from his brain after the hemorrhagic stroke. And their dad also underwent a craniectomy, which is a removal of the skull, to decrease the brain pressures after the bleed. James and his sister Christine were getting their dad in one of the best hospitals in the United States, the Cleveland Clinic in Ohio. In the meantime, their dad was getting a tracheostomy because he couldn't be weaned off the ventilator and the breathing tube. He also had ongoing seizures due to the stroke and his anti-seizure medications needed to be optimized so he could wake up and progress to neurology rehabilitation. So in today's episode of Your Questions Answered, I'm talking to James again while his dad was trying to be weaned off some seizure medications to get him more awake. James can also see the limitations in terms of the breathing tube or endotracheal tube his dad was still having and how he would benefit from a tracheostomy. James wants to know what's the best course of action in how to get his dad more awake, how to manage his anti-seizure medications without being prone for seizures. So today's consulting and advocacy session is another excerpt from various one-on-one -on -one phone and email consulting and advocacy sessions with me. And the topic in today's Your Questions Answered episode as part of this series is how to manage seizures in intensive care after a hemorrhagic stroke. You can also have a look at previous episodes of this series of one-on-one -on -one consulting and advocacy questions with James and Christine if you're clicking on the link links below this video. And if you are watching this on YouTube, just click on the links below this video and it'll get you to our website with all the other free resources and with all and with access to all of the other parts of this consulting and advocacy session. So James writes, Hi Patrick, as you know, dad had the hemorrhagic stroke a couple of weeks back and he's still ventilated with a breathing tube he doesn't like. The CT scan of the brain suggests a large bleed which they have evacuated and they've also done a craniectomy to limit the brain pressures. He's still having regular seizures. My father is currently on Keppra and Dilantin to prevent the seizures. They didn't give him the Keppra last night as he was more alert. They gave it to him this morning and he doesn't seem as responsive. I will find out the dose he's on. Obviously, we need him to wake up so we can get him off the ventilator. The blood pressure medications to the heart were removed to regulate his blood pressure and machine to monitor his fever was removed as well. My dad is not very responsive at the moment. My dad is also on sodium chloride, Keppra and some antibiotics. They now discontinued the Dilantin. He seems like he's sleepy but still moving slightly trying to wake him up because we have to decide on tracheostomy and feeding tube by tomorrow. What are your suggestions and thoughts? So here is my response. Hi James, please see, here is my response. So you're saying your father is not very responsive. So what does that exactly mean? Is he opening eyes? Is he still trying to pull out the breathing tube? I understand one side, the right side, is paralyzed and is only moving his left side. 
Can you ask the doctors and the nurses about his GCS or Glasgow Coma Scale? I have attached a picture in relation to GCS. I would imagine your dad's GCS might fluctuate between 5 to 11. Have a look and ask them. If you need clarification around GCS score, we can discuss over the phone. Now, for you viewer, have a look on this website because I put a picture of Glasgow Coma Scale on this page. So just scroll down below this video and you can actually see how you can evaluate a GCS score. So next, James, you're saying your dad is on sodium chloride. So that is a normal standard infusion to keep him hydrated. Then you mentioned your dad is on Keppra. Now, Keppra needs to be seen in combination with Dilantin, also known as Phenytoin. Usually one or the other is given to manage seizures in the beginning. I'm glad they took Dilantin off and only continue with Keppra. One or the other is fine normally. Keppra has some sedative effects but shouldn't stop patients from waking up. If your dad is still not waking up, it's most likely not the Keppra and I will explain in more detail further below. Now, you also mention he's on antibiotics. Well, the question is, why is he on antibiotics? Does he have an infection? Did you mention he had a pneumonia? Please clarify. So then you're saying they discontinued the dilantin, and that's good as long as they can control the seizures. Next, you're saying he seems like he's sleepy but still moving. Now, the movement is a good sign. The sleepiness is part of the head injury and or seizure medication. It's probably a combination of both. The waking up in ICU, especially after head and brain injury, will take time. How much time? I don't know. Maybe days, maybe weeks and maybe even months. That's why a tracheostomy is the way forward to have a secure airway that's painless. A tracheostomy will buy your dad time and it'll be easier to get him out of bed and mobilize him. The more stimulation he can tolerate, the better. I will refer to more resources below. Now you're saying that trying to wake him up because we have to decide on tracheostomy and feeding tube by tomorrow. At this stage, James, from what you are describing, if his neurological condition hasn't changed since we last spoke yesterday, and if it's not significantly changing today or tomorrow, I would suggest a tracheostomy because your dad will be more comfortable with it. Do I have any suggestions? Well, other suggestions are to get the helmet fitted so that they can start mobilizing him once he has the tracheostomy. Please also ask them again for his GCS score. Here's a picture below so you can actually look up how you score a Glasgow Coma Scale. Now, and then James responds back. Hi Patrick, now my father had a partial seizure on the left, which is his injured side this morning. They started him on Vimpat. They're still weaning the Dilantin or Phenytoin. He's also still on Keppra. Can you please advise from James? So here is my response. Hi, James. That's not such good news, but also not overly surprising. Again, have they done a CT scan of the brain after the seizures? It also depends how big and how long the seizure lasted. Do you know if they have given your dad some midazolam, also known as Versed, or diazepam to manage the seizures? If they are weaning the Dilantin and he's having seizures, they may need to either wean it slower or increase the Keppra. It also depends on how much he's stimulated during the day and also the night. I'm glad to hear he's not on, e not on any inotropes or vasopressors or vasodilators, for high or low blood pressure. This again is a good sign and it means he's quote unquote only on one form of major life support, which is the mechanical ventilation. It's great if he can breathe without the tracheostomy. I would be all for it. However, the absence of a spontaneous cough will make it very difficult to protect his airway without the tracheostomy. 
If they think he will wake up in the next few days and, and can breathe and cough, it would be tremendous. Any questions, please let me know. So here is James's response, response to my email. Hi Patrick, my dad's blood pressure is only 90 over 45 at the moment. It seems too low. His temperature is 99.9 .9 Fahrenheit, which is 37.7 Celsius. His heart rate is 90 and I'm worried and I'm very worried. Can you please advise? So here is my response. Hi James, yes, your dad has a low blood pressure. He may need the inotropes or vasopressors like norepinephrine or epinephrine back, or he might need fluid replacement. Remember, as we discussed, it's often two steps forward and one step back. The temperature is slightly up, but not too much. His heart rate 90 is okay. If his temperature and his heart rate keep going up and his blood pressure keeps going down, he might have an infection. Other things to look for are infection markers in the blood, such as CRP and white cell count. Just ask. Let me know when you want to get on the phone again. Best wishes. So, watch out for the next consulting session with James and his sister Christine in the next episode of Your Questions Answered next week. See you then. So, how can you become the best advocate for your critically ill loved one. How can you make informed decisions, get peace of mind, control, power and influence quickly whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care? Well, you get to that all important feeling of making informed decisions, get peace of mind, control, power and influence when you download your free Instant Impact Report now by entering your email below. In your free Instant Impact Report, you will learn quickly how to make informed decisions, get peace of mind, real power and real control, and how you can influence decision-making fast whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. Your free Instant Impact Report gives you in-depth insight that you must know whilst your loved one is critically ill or is even dying in intensive care. Sign up and download your free Instant Impact Report now by entering your email below. In your free Instant Impact Report, you will learn how to speak the secret intensive care language so that the doctors and the nurses know straight away that you are an insider and that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care. In your free report, you will also discover how to ask the doctors and the nurses the right questions. Discover the many competing interests in intensive care and how your critically ill loved one's treatment may depend on those competing interests. How to eliminate fear, frustration, stress, struggle and vulnerability even if your loved one is dying. You will get five mind-blowing tips and strategies helping you to get on the right path to making informed decisions, get peace of mind control, power and influence in your situation. You will get real world examples that you can easily adapt to your and your critically ill loved one's situation. How to stop being intimidated by the intensive care team and how you will be seen as equals. You will get crucial behind the scenes inside so that you know and understand what is really happening in intensive care and how you need to manage doctors and nurses in intensive care and it's not what you think. Thank you for tuning into this week's Your Questions Answered episode and I will see you again in another update next week. Make sure 
you also check out our blog section for more tips and strategies or simply send me an email to support at intensivecarehotline.com with your questions. Also, have a look at our membership site, intensivecaresupport.org for families of critically ill patients in intensive care. Or you can call me, find international phone numbers on the top of the website. Also, have a look at our ebook section and you can also get one-on-one -on -one consulting and advocacy with me via Skype over the phone or via email by clicking on the tabs. This is Patrick Hutzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com and I'll see you again next week in another update.